Greetings and welcome to Lizard Creations. For this video, I'm going to show you how I turn barn board like this into picture frames like this using a finger jointer. I hope you enjoy the video. The first step is to find your barn board. Now I was fortunate, I had a father-in-law who had an old fence that had to come down and an old shed that had to come down. Plus friends of mine put me in contact with someone who was also removing a fence. So I got my barn board, which is authentic. Most of my wood is 30 to 60 years old. And the next step is to tear this apart, which is a ton of work and remove all the nails. You don't want to hit a nail with a saw or a router at a later date. Anyway, I'll do all that and then we'll get started on the actual production of the picture frames. Once you have your wood and have removed the nails, you'll find there's often a substantial amount of waste due to damaged or unsuitable wood. The first step is to clean the wood. For this I use a wire brush. You want to clean your wood for a couple of reasons. You don't want to make picture frames with decades of dirt on them. Also the dirt will dull cutting tools. Cleaning the boards with a wire brush can take a substantial amount of time and your arms and shoulders do get a good workout. The wire brush does make quite a difference. Once the boards have been cleaned, you can start trimming off damaged and unsuitable pieces. Once the ends of the boards have been squared off, you can cut the boards to the length needed for the sides of the frame. To simplify this, I have made jigs to consistently cut the boards to the length needed for the size of the glass we ordered. We use barn board for my wife's watercolor paintings, which require a glass covering. Although I make frames for her acrylic and mixed media paintings, they do not require glass, so I custom make each frame for those paintings. I have jigs for the top, bottom, and sides of the frames. When I am cutting the boards, I use the same board for each individual frame. The wood that is leaning is the wood for the frames. The pile of wood on the left is waste wood that will be going into my fire pit. Since this is old warp wood, I created a jig and a set of guides that I use to cut the boards to the desired width. The dowels in the guide ensure the correct width at the end of each board, which is the critical dimension for the corner joints. I have specific dowels for various lengths of each frame piece. The shorter boards fit between the dowels for longer boards, and the longer dowel is used to push the board through the saw. I use an accurately cut guide that I made to set the distance from the correct dowel pin. Here you can see how the next longer dowel pin is used to cut the boards. I made my own feather board to ensure the boards are held firmly against the dowel pins. I also like push blocks made of wood. As you can see, this board has a knot sticking out from the side. If this edge was up against a regular straight fence, the board could rock and it would not produce a straight edge. It could also be dangerous if the board were to bind. Using my jig eliminates this problem since the board is only making contact with the tips of the board. Once I have finished cutting all of the short boards, I set up for the longer pieces. Here's a problem that can happen when cutting boards with knots. Now that the boards are the correct length and width, I will proceed with cutting the bevels. I set the miter saw to 45 degrees and use my jigs to ensure the lengths are correct. Note that the short side of the bevel will be the straight edge facing the inside of the frame. Here's a complete set of boards to make a frame. It is now time to start finger jointing the bevels. Before I get started, I match up each board to get the best overall look of the frame and the corner joints. I 
I number each corner so the finger joints are cut for each pair of corners. I made this jig so I get perfect 90 degree corner finger joints. I use a piece of cardboard paper to do some fine adjusting to make sure the faces of each board match as close as possible. I insert each paired numbered board into the jig with the good side face down. I use pieces of plastic to press down on each board to ensure they are held as flat as possible once the screws have been tightened. The rubber bungee clamps the boards tight up against the fence that forms a perfect 90 degree corner. I feed the wood through the finger jointer slowly to reduce tear out. I trim off any feathered edges with a sharp blade. The inside corner is the critical edge to line up when joining the boards together. Note that there is no glue yet and the surface of the frame is flush. The joint is also a perfect 90 degrees. You may have noticed that I wrote the different router speeds for my router on the router table that I made. Well, I also write the maximum speed of each router bit on the bit. This way I know the correct RPM for each bit and I can adjust my router accordingly. As you can see, there is no consistency between boards or even the same board. That is why I try to have the front faces of the frames as flush as possible. The thickness of the frames can and often vary so the backs are not as flush as the front. The next step is cutting the rabbit. I relabeled each corner since the numbers I originally put on the boards will be cut off and I want to maintain the match corners for the glue up. I use a rabbit bit with a bearing for a half inch depth. The height of the cut will vary depending on the thickness of the board. The rabbit is on the inside of the frame along the straight edge and on the back side of the board. Because this is old dry wood, it occasionally splinters along the thin edge or areas may come out completely. This is where having a half inch rabbit comes in handy. You can clean up the edge with the table saw. A quarter inch rabbit is enough to support the glass, but you do have to trim all four boards. Since matting is used on the painting, the size of the rabbit cut isn't critical. 
I made a 90 degree gluing table out of plexiglass. This provides me with a perfect corner to line my frame. Before I start gluing the pieces together, I lay them out on the table. I apply a liberal amount of glue to both pieces, but on the front side of the tab facing the front of the frame, I use very little glue to avoid it squeezing out during clamping. I loosely fit the pieces together to allow for adjustment when I clamp the frames. I wipe off any excess glue on the front of the frame before I flip it over face down on the table. Because finger joints stick out past the edge of the frame, I use shims to keep the frame square during clamping. To assist with the squaring, I put a board in the opening which is the exact size of the glass and use it as a guide as I tighten the clamps. I leave a small space around the board as I clamp them to ensure the glass will fit. I wipe off any excess glue that squeezes out of the joints with a damp cloth. It is always a good idea to verify that the glass fits. Once the glue is dried, I cut off the tabs that stick out past the corners. As a final touch up, I gently sand the corners to get a nice smooth clean edge. I also sand the inside edge of the frame to remove any potential rough edges. If you ever wonder what the advantage is of a finger joint, it's strength. I would never do this with a regular standard frame. Do not try this at home. Well, I finished making all the frames. The next step is for my wife Elizabeth to figure out how she wants to finish them. The finishing will depend on the actual painting, so it complements the painting itself. Now, she does that in a variety of different ways. On my left here, is a group of paintings that she actually painted the frames different colors. Here in the center we have black frames. Over here we have natural barn board frames, but the joints are different than the actual joints we did in this video. They're the more traditional joints. This is also a barn board frame, but she painted it black. It's called Magma Mayhem, and she painted it a couple months prior to the eruption in Iceland. So this isn't based on the actual eruption. This came before the eruption. Anyway, that's the painting I intend to showcase at the end of this video, which is the next step. Time to showcase two of my wife's paintings. The first painting is called Magma Mayhem. It's a mixed media painting on a 20 by 16 canvas board. It has a 22 by 18 inch black barn board frame. Here's a close up of the painted frame. The second painting is Ratatat Tat. It's a watercolor painting. It's on a 16 by 12 inch, 140 pound paper. It has a 23 by 19 inch rustic barn board frame. Here's a close up of its frame. And remember, have fun, be safe, and create a remarkable treasure.